Hey everyone, welcome back. Adam here with Indy Farm Life. So today I'm gonna show you guys my custom DIY fireplace heat exchanger. I don't have a fire going just yet. I wanna show you all the detail first, but once I do that, we'll light up a fire and I'll show you how well this thing works. But before I show you how it's built, let's talk about why I built it. So I'm sitting in an enclosed porch that is not insulated other than the knee wall. And this 42 inch fireplace puts out an immense amount of heat. Because of the lack of insulation, we lose heat pretty quickly. And this thing has a 14 inch flue, so it sucks it right out. I really needed a way to harness more heat and more BTUs from this massive fireplace. And I know what you're probably thinking, Adam, just add more insulation. Well, yeah, I probably will at some point, but hey, I'm already building this fire. Let's just be smarter about the wood that goes in there and getting the most out of that wood. All right, that's enough backstory. Let me show you how this thing's built. Let me pull this fireplace grate out of here. This is a new one I just bought. Pretty heavy duty. And before I get too far down this rabbit hole, uh, I'm not liable if you burn your house down. This is a entertainment channel, not a do it as I do channel. You're playing with fire, folks. Be smart. Don't do what I do. But this is just something I did. So how is this thing built? One and a half inch black gas pipe. Now it's important you use regular black gas pipe and not galvanized because galvanized throws off some toxic fumes. So what I did was simply get a bunch of parts and pieces. I think that's an 18 inch run. I got a 45 number of nipples and then 12 inch pieces that rise and fall with uh, close nipples and 90s in there. All in, I think the back of that thing is about 24, 26 inches wide. Threw another 45 on there and it pumps out here on the side. As we go back here to the intake side, I just kind of have a handful of fittings kind of snaking around this corner. And I use a Fernco coupler into some Schedule 40 pipe into another Fernco that steps up the size to four inch into this flexible ductwork. And I have one of these little four inch inline fans on like a rheostat, if you will. We'll talk about that more later as we get a fire going. So there's not much to this, it's just black pipe, number of fittings. The most difficult part was figuring out the dimensions and all the pieces and parts to make it fully use the space. This thing's heavy. That's enough detail for now. Let's get a fire going and I'll show you how well this thing works. Go I'm gonna need all you Boy Scouts to look away. Uh, obviously this is the easy way to do it. You know what, as I get older, I don't mind the easy way. I mentioned I got a new grate. You can see how tall this one is. Uh, really does a nice job of keeping some air and elevation above the bottom of the fireplace to A, keep my log lighter from getting all marred up and it gives you more height and headroom so that you keep these bars out of the hot coal bed. This thing has a lifetime warranty on it so long as you don't let it get into the hot coal bed. So having it be taller uh, makes a big difference. If you're wanting something heavy duty like this, then I'll link it below. For reference, there's my old one. It only sat like an inch and a half, two inches off the bottom of the fireplace and you can just see how the coal bed builds up and just destroys those things. It's not the case with this one. Actually, the case is out there by the barn in the snow. See its bucket? All right, so it's now firing in its own power, i.e. the gas is off. So once the thing gets fully hot, we'll start doing some testing. So why did I decide to build my own unit versus buying one of the prefab units? Well, a couple reasons. The simplest reason is cost. The ones you can buy on the market are like 700 bucks at minimum, and they go up from there. I think I, think I saw them for like 1200 bucks. This one I built for like less than 350, and that includes all my fittings and the fan over here. Also the design, a lot of the ones I saw on the market, they build them that sit underneath the fire. And yeah, you get great exchange, right, from the coal bed into those steel bars or steel plates or whatever it may be. But as you saw over here on my grate, doesn't matter, at some point steel is going to weaken and soften and deform. Whereas with mine, I built it all around the back, so mine never actually sits in the coal bed. I might be losing a little bit of radiant heat, but let me tell you, this thing cooks. And then the third reason I already touched on is just custom. I couldn't find one unit that would fit the way I wanted it. I almost pulled the trigger on one, but then it was gonna get in the way of my log lighter. So in my opinion, custom is always the way to go. So the fire's starting to take off pretty good here, but it's gonna be a minute before we're at optimal heat exchange temperature. I found that when you get this thing down to a nice coal bed is when this thing really rocks, which is awesome, right? Because right now this thing's putting off tremendous radiant heat from the flames itself. You get that radiant heat in the coal bed, but it dissipates pretty fast. If you can harness it with this and kick it out, man, it really does a nice job making your firewood go a lot further. So like I mentioned before, all of my pipes are never gonna be in the coal bed. They're all kind of tucked away, but they do pick up a lot of heat. 
and yes, these panels are refractory panels, so they actually throw heat back. So like on that back one, we got the flames hitting the pipe on this side, that back panel is getting hot and radiating heat back into that pipe. So we'll pop that fan on here in a minute and see what we're kind of getting out of this pipe. My guess is it's not going to be very hot just yet. If you're building this, do you need a blower? Yeah, probably. You could probably build it in a way where you'd get more of a draft if you have, you know, your intake real low and your output up real high. I get a small draft with no fan on here, but you really need the fan to really kick the heat into the room. I may have mentioned it. Don't use galvanized toxic fumes. Don't do that. Also, don't use any kind of pipe dope on these things. You don't need this to be airtight. You're going to be pushing like less than half a PSI of pressure through these things. So don't use pipe dope. Not needed. And then just throwing more stuff in the fire. It shouldn't be in here. First fire, you will get a little smoke. Kind of the cutting oils and stuff that are on these black pipes. Make sure you're well ventilated. I did it by myself out here and I had the door open most of the time. Or take the whole unit and set it outside in a fire and then bring it into the house. Obviously after it cools down. So before I turn the fan on, we'll use the trusty old thermometer just to get temps of the pipes. Kind of jump around the corners and just see where it's at. So that corner there is 49 degrees. Back corner, 230, 250. How about this one up here in the top? 295, getting some heat there. 315, 320, far corner, only 100. And down here in the bottom right, 130. And this out piece is going to be pretty cool too. 49. And so I know you're impressed, right? Adam, you built a real nice piece of crap. It gets hot when you put it in the fire. So I show you those numbers now. They are very low because these things are going to skyrocket. I'm not kidding. I have a picture somewhere and we may get there even today. I had air temps coming out of this thing at 427 degrees, I think it was the other day. It was absolutely absurd. All right, let's pop that fan on. Don't get... So let that run and give that pipe head a minute to warm up. One constraint or one headache I've run into is, this is one and a half inch pipe. My fan's a four inch fan going into four inch ductwork, reducing down to one and a half. I got a little bit of an issue where that fan isn't powerful enough to push all the air I'd want through here. That's something I got to troubleshoot. I may put like a little plenum in the middle of it to go from four down to one and a half to kind of even things out. My goal was to push the air, but also not have it too loud out here. So before I put this fan on here the other day, I was using this leaf blower with the suction hose from a shop vac. And it was loud, but it was pushing an insane amount of air out of here. I got to maybe get back to that at some point. All right, it's been burned for about 30 or 40 minutes now. I got a nice hot fire. We'll do another temp check on this thing. One thing, let's check, make sure we don't have a lot of heat traveling back, which would be bad. And we don't. These pipes are still ice cold, which are being fed by room air over here. I'm not surprised. It was 36 degrees out here when I first got in this room. So yeah, no issue there. Can't get to that corner because it's buried in fire. Up here at this corner here, 400. I can get the fire on that one, 600. This pipe here, 370. 330 down here on the right side 340 if it's not 200 plus coming out of here i'll be shocked oh i missed there we go that 225 coming out of there is pretty darn hot but still not even close to what i've maxed out on it's really all about airflow that little fan works all right here in a couple minutes i'll hook up the leaf blower to this thing just so you guys can see and then i think i'm also going to break for dinner here in a little bit with the family We'll come back when this thing is burned down and see what it's putting out. One thing I've been messing with is changing the output on the front of this. This right here works, but I was kind of fearful that the heat kind of landing right here was getting sucked right back up into my hot fire. So I do have a couple fittings here to kind of raise the elevation and kick the heat out a little bit more. Plus it makes for a nice place to sit and absorb the heat as you're out when you're out here. Let's see if I can do this without getting burned. Decent. I don't need to go crazy with this. Both kids, you got to be careful. Then again, they're not getting this close to the fire to begin with. It's pretty hot. So a little something like that. And then kind of bring it over this way and rest it. So it gets the, the heat kind of outside the firebox, making sure it stays in the room and not going back up the flue. Let's see what we can do with that leaf blower. You won't be able to hear me talk, but it'd be awesome. So if the fire looks a little different from that last take, it's because as soon as I got this hooked up, it was time for dinner. So I hook the old fan or the main fan back up, let it go. We'll check it here and then we'll put the big blower on it and see. I can tell you right now it's already throwing out some serious heat. So it's up here on the brick, 59 degrees. Go down here, 340. Oh, I round up. Hope that's cool with you guys. 
Now for the big guns here. I'm telling you, this thing's all about airflow. All right, all this testing is making me sweaty. It was 36 degrees in here when we started. It's not 36 anymore, I just opened a window actually. I'm done with the leaf blower, went back to the four inch inline. I can't sit here, it is too hot. Over here by the firewood stack, a little bit away from the radiant heat. A few parting comments as we wrap this thing up. I love it already. I probably need to get a little better solution on my fan, but it's a balance between noise and output. I mean, it's plenty warm in here right now. Also, yes, I know this is an enormous fire with a lot of firewood on it. My question to you is, have you met me? It's a 42 inch fireplace. Like I said, it was 36 degrees when we came out here. It needs a lot of wood. This thing eats a lot of wood. If you are gonna build this, again, no pipe dope and don't use galvanized. Lowe's and Home Depot do not stock one and a half inch diameter pipe, at least around me. Went to Menards, so do with that what you will. Also, if you have some questions about designing and layout in yours and angles and everything like that, I use ChatGPT. Might as well use the tools that are available. Helped me a lot in figuring out what pieces and parts I needed and what width, etc. So hopefully this will help me cut down my firewood usage a little bit this winter. Again, I have plenty, but I have to carry it up a flight of stairs to get it here. So this is certainly a helpful addition. So if you're in the same boat, you need a little extra heat from your fireplace without going crazy, you know, put an insert in there, etc. This could be an option. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys next time. Take care. I'm sweaty. I gotta move. And check out my fire just skying above that coal bed. I love that.